Okay, so if you recall in our previous video, we looked at three steps in integrating rational functions. And in step three, we said that we want to decompose the remainder from the long division over the factored form of our divisor as a sum of partial fractions, which is a sum of simpler rational functions. And the best way to understand how this works, how to obtain such a decomposition, is through a few examples. So let us consider three examples that will hopefully illustrate the two key ingredients in decomposing such an expression as a sum of partial fractions. And you will see that the decomposition, at first the form, only depends on the factored form of q of x and not on r of x. r of x will have an impact in finding what we'll see are the coefficients of our decomposition. So suppose our first example is the following. We have r of x over, and then we factored q completely over the real numbers, and it's factored as x plus 3 squared times x minus 1 to the fourth power. So q of x would have been x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. But once q is fully factored, we regroup the similar factors together. And now we ask, how can we decompose, break down this single rational function into a sum of simpler rational functions known as partial fractions? Well, we have two factors. If we ignore for now the exponents, so if we ignore the power of 2 and the power of 4, both factors are linear factors, x plus 3 and x minus 1. So the first question is, well, what partial fractions will come from the x plus 3 squared? Because we have a 2, two partial fractions will come from this term. And here, because we have a 4, four partial fractions will come from this term for a total of 2 plus 4, 6 partial fractions. Okay. So we have our six partial fractions, again coming from the exponents. Two will come from x plus three. So what are they? The first one will be over x plus three. And the second one you can probably guess will be over x plus three squared. And we right now we do not worry about the numerator of our rational functions. We always handle first how many such partial fractions do we have, and the denominator first. You can probably guess what's going to happen with the four partial fractions coming from the x minus 1 to the 4 term. The first one will be over x minus 1. The second one going up 1 power will be x minus 1 squared. The third one going up one power again, x minus 1 cubed. And the fourth one going up one power, x minus 1 to the 4. And hopefully you see it. If the power, say, here would have been 8, out of the x minus 1, we would have 8 partial fractions going from x minus 1 to the 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so forth. So that's how you should read the powers. Now, the question is, well, what goes on the numerator of each such rational function? When you look for the numerator, you have to ignore the exponent. So you ignore the 2, ignore the 4, and x plus 3 is a linear polynomial. When you have a linear factor, what goes on top is a single constant, and that holds true for both partial fractions. So we have one constant a, another possible constant, b. Now if you look for the numerators of the four partial fractions coming from the second term, again you ignore the four, and the factor x minus one is linear, therefore on its numerator for each one will also be a constant. They could all be different, we don't know, so we could use c, d, e, and f. And this is how you decompose 
if this was the case, this single rational function into a sum of six partial fractions, simpler rational functions. And for now, we'll leave the coefficients as is. Because of, of course you want to solve for the coefficients, you're asking, well, how do we find these coefficients? For now, don't worry about this. This will be the topic of our next two videos. But let's look at another example now. What if we have r of x divided by x plus 1 squared times x squared plus 1 cubed. So again, we first look at our denominator. So we have here x plus 1 with a power of 2. This will give us two partial fractions. And here we have x squared plus 1 to the 3, so three partial fractions. So the first two partial fractions coming from the x plus 1 squared term plus the three partial fractions coming from the x squared plus 1 term. Okay, so first we handle our denominators. So for x plus 1 we'll have, as before, over x plus 1, then over x plus 1 squared. Now if you notice here we have the cubic power of now a, an irreducible quadratic. But as far as the denominator goes, it is still the same idea. So we'll go from x squared plus 1 to x squared plus 1 all squared, all the way up to x squared plus 1 all cubed. Check. So whether you have a linear factor or an irreducible quadratic factor, you handle the denominators in the exact same fashion. What's interesting is what happens for the numerators. Again, when you consider the numerator, the form of the numerator, you ignore the exponents, so ignore this 2, ignore this 3. We have here a linear factor, so what goes on top of each of its partial fraction is a constant term. What's interesting is, when you have an irreducible quadratic factor, what goes on top will not be a single constant, but a linear polynomial. So some multiple of x plus a constant and the same goes for all three partial fractions. Is all three partial fractions originate from the irreducible quadratic polynomial. And that is the only true difference. Whenever a partial fraction originates from a linear factor, the numerator is a constant term. Whenever a partial fraction originates, from an irreducible quadratic factor, the numerator has to be a linear polynomial. Some multiple of x plus a constant. And let's do now one last example. What if we had not just two factors once combined together, but three different factors? So what if we had r of x over x squared over x plus 1 cubed times x squared plus 2. Now if you look here, x squared plus 2 is alone, so the exponent of course is simply 1. So as always we first handle our denominators. This is an x, which is of course a linear factor. Don't mistake this for a quadratic because we only have to separate the irreducible quadratics from the linear factors, but x squared is not an irreducible quadratic. It is x times x, so a linear factor multiplied with itself twice. So, out of this x we'll get two partial fractions, out of the x plus 1 we'll get three partial fractions, and out of this x squared plus 2, which is an irreducible quadratic, we'll get one partial fraction for a total of six partial fractions. So the x squared will go from x to x squared. The x plus 1 cubed we go from x plus 1 to x plus 1 squared 
2 x plus 1 cubed. And the x squared plus 2, as it has an exponent of 1, gives us a single partial fraction x squared plus 2. And now for the numerators, as we have said before, we ignore the exponents and look at the factor. x is a linear polynomial, so its numerator for each partial fraction must be a constant. Same for x plus 1, it is a linear factor, so for each of its three partial fractions, we must have a constant numerator. And now, x squared plus 2 is an irreducible quadratic, so its numerator must be a linear polynomial. Some multiple of x plus a constant. And that's it. So hopefully, with these three examples, you understand now how to take a rational function where two conditions are met. The degree of the numerator is strictly smaller than the degree of the denominator, and the denominator is fully factored as a product of linear or irreducible quadratic terms. And hopefully now this decomposition is fairly straightforward. But the question remains, how do we solve for the coefficients of such a decomposition? And this will be the topic of our next video.